Okay, Dad, this is the Nicene Creed, which you seem to have a problem with. Because everything it says in here is fine until you get to this little sentence. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. What is apostolic church? Apostolic churches are a Christian denomination that arose from the Pentecostal origins. Okay, that's fine. It's like the apostles. Apostolic origins and belief. By adhering to the doctrines of the gospel. I'm wondering, different apostolic churches. I don't know. Anyways, Klamath Falls. Hmm. Interesting apostolic lighthouse in Klamath Falls. Okay, anyways. Everything in the Nicene Creed is correct. There's nothing wrong with it. It, it lines up with the Bible. The only thing that you probably have a problem with is, is I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Which you don't have to believe in either of those. Just believe in all the rest of what it says and it's good. Okay. So, if the Nicene Creed has anything to do with the Council of Nicaea, does it? I don't know. Anyways. Let's go on to this part. The Hebrew and Greek texts are the same as the KJV texts. They were not tampered with. The Hebrew text, the Greek text, were not tampered with. And the KJV came from the Hebrew and the Greek. If there were scripts written about reincarnation, then those scripts weren't included when putting the 66 books of the Bible together 60 years after Jesus ascended into heaven because reincarnation is not what Jesus preached nor was it in the Old Testament. So, there's nothing about reincarnation congruent with any of that. Okay, the entire Bible is congruent from beginning to end, speaking of eternal hell throughout its entirety, or else there was no reason for Jesus to, giving himself up to the authorities, which by the way, when Jesus was dead for three days, he went to hell to preach to the spirits in prison, which it says in 1 Peter 3. And... And Peter said, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. He might bring us to God? How does he might do that? He might do it if we choose him before we die. That's how he does it. He might bring us to God if we choose him back. Okay. That he might bring us to God, being put to death on the cross in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Okay, so what are these? The spirits in prison that Peter speaks of are the spirits in hell. Those are the spirits in hell. And also in 1 Peter, in that area, I think he also talks about Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah. I can't remember. I think he does. Maybe I added it in here. I don't remember. Anyways, I, did, I just wanted to keep this short as I, possible. And in Revelation 1.18, Jesus said, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. He has the keys of hell and death. Because he went into... Here, excuse me. Jesus has the keys of hell and death. By what Peter says here, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Okay? That means he was in hell. What kind of a spirit 
is in hell, is in prison. It's in hell. Okay, so we got, he's got the keys of hell and death. Now, then Peter talks more about hell and P 2 Peter 2. Sorry. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, and spare not the old world, all of the people in Nephilim, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those after should live ungodly and deliver just Lot and Noah, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them in seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds, that's Lot, the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation, which are his sheep, and to reserve the unjust, those people who are deemed as the goats, unto the day of judgment to be punished. <sighs> punished. In eternal hell, human beings okay Jude 1 5 7 and Jude brother of Jesus said I will therefore put you in remembrance though ye once knew this how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them he destroyed them that did not believe and the angels, which kept not their first estate in heaven, but left their own habitation, which was in heaven, he, God, has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication porn that's where the word fornication comes from it's like ek pornio and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example when they go after strange flesh they were going after the angels that came into sodom and gomorrah and set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Vengeance. These are the human beings rejecting God, giving God the finger, making themselves cuddly gods of sex gods and whatnot, false idol gods, not gods who talk about reincarnation nothing to be afraid of this isn't bad dad you said you have no fear but there is one fear that you need to have and that is the fear of god's wrath which is eternal hell matthew 10 28 and jesus oh by the way see right here boop 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 right here we're almost done and Jesus said and fear not them as in human beings which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul and that and in that he's talking about humans who can kill the body but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell Jesus is referring to God's wrath God's wrath is hell that's where his wrath is and 
Satan and his demons are there. And they are the ones who will torment human beings for eternity. It's not a party. Some people think, oh, if hell's real, I'd rather go there because at least I get to party and do what I want. No, that's not how it works. Where do you think people get the idea of judgment and courts and police? They get it from God. They get the idea from God because God is a just God, a God of justice, of judgment. He's not going to let people into his house who are dirty and naked, who die in their sin, unless he has a purpose to pluck somebody out of hell, which is very rare, so that those people who are atheists or whatnot can come back and say, hell is real. Hell is real. I don't want my worst enemy going there. That's how bad it is. Okay. Proverbs 9.10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. So knowing what God is capable of doing. Let me go like this. So knowing what God is capable of doing to those who reject him and or his truth, we have to be wise by understanding who God is and what God does. There is no fear in reincarnation. Of course there isn't. You just keep going and going. No big deal. Nothing to be scared of. My goodness. I'm just going to say it again. And Jesus said, Rather fear him which is able to destroy both body and soul in hell. Now, some people think that when you go to hell, you're annihilated and you cease to exist. But that's not what the Bible says. It talks about eternal hell. The, where the worm never dies. If a worm doesn't die, then neither would a spirit. A spirit is eternal. It is not out of existence because we came from that part of God, which is eternal. And so he has to have, it's like Ghostbusters. You got to have a containment system for the, the, debauch, the debauchery and the the sickness of the virus bugs that have infected God's computer system, his house, so to speak, like termites. He has to get rid of the termites out of his heavenly system. That's why Jesus came to earth to give us a second chance. Okay, so, okay. Um... Mm-hmm. Where was I? Okay. Okay, last thing. Matthew 10, 22. And Jesus said, And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. People will be hated for loving Jesus. The true Jesus. The true Jesus. Not the gay pride Jesus where he lets anybody it's a free-for-all no that's a false Jesus but he that endureth to the end shall be saved this is Jesus talking and you shall be hated of all men for my sake but he that endures to the end shall be saved dad what are we being saved from if we endure until the end in steadfast, intimate relationship with Jesus? Not with your dead relatives, with God the Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Those are the only people, entity, heavenly entities you should be speaking to. If you're speaking to anybody else, it's wrong. 
what's wrong. Okay, one more thing. Dad, if you really want to be like Jesus, then you would do what Jesus did, which is to warn people about hell. And the way I do it is telling people if there is such a thing as hell, if it turns out to be a fact, even if you believe that hell doesn't exist, what if it does exist? Are you willing to gamble with the possibility that your eternal spirit could end up in hell? Because Jesus said there is no one good but God. No one good but God. And that all people will end up in hell unless they come to the truth which will set you free from hell. That's the question. What's the truth? And I, Dad, I just want to say really quick that there is this woman who came on to Facebook and to Jamie's Facebook a couple years ago. I'm going to go like this for a minute. And she... It's kind of a weird picture. And she um, was wanting to talk to Jamie. And she's kind of like this kind of gothic rock and roll lady. And uh, anyways... Jamie was very leery about her. He was like, who is this woman? What does she want? And, and I was like, well, let me check her out. I'll, I'll see what's going on with her. And so I did. And for two years, we would talk to each other off and on. And she told me about what happened to her when she was a kid. And then... I was very gentle and delicate with her because she told me, she said, I was baptized when I was young, but God told me that I need to do it again. And I had to explain to her about what baptized, spiritual baptism meant. And, and I, and anyways, she just wrote to me on Facebook just this last week and there's a video you can watch and I'll put it and you can click on it after this video. It's going to be on the screen. I want you to click on it and watch it. It's only a four minute video, but and there's going to be two. Well, just watch that one. That'll be the one. And but she was a lesbian ready to get married to a woman and I told her that marriage was not Adam and Steve it was Adam and Eve and I gave her scripture and I gave her because she was abused as a child by her parents and so I helped her the Holy Spirit through me showed me how to do it correctly with her now god was the one who directed her to jamie to get to me she wrote back to me and she said i finally found god christy you did a good job with me and it wasn't me who did it god used me as a tool to bring her to him I have no the only thing I have that's worthy of me is the fact that I am a tool of God that's the only good thing about me I'm just I'm an empty vessel to be used as a tool for the Holy Spirit and that's what I did for her. In fact, I gave her a couple of videos 
about one lesbian who talked about how she came to Christ and another tra transgender who was a who's a woman who wanted to be a man and how Jesus showed her that Satan was behind all of the sexual immorality to stop people from making babies so that bloodlines could be cut and anyways that's how God works in people God does not send dead spirits of relatives to talk about reincarnation that's not how it works this is a very serious matter and it's about <sighs> this woman who came to me didn't uh, God didn't send her to me to say let's keep her from being homosexual so that her next life will be better as in reincarnation no he did this because now she's gonna go help people kids who have been molested that's what she's gonna do she's gonna be she said I'm gonna I'm gonna have I'm living a life of celibacy I got my roommate to finally trust in God and so she's doing work now and it's not for reincarnation because I told her about hell and sin and all that stuff so she ne she now has the fear and the understanding of what God can do and will do if you don't know the absolute truth the truth will set you free from the punishment and the deathbed of your sins that people choose to embrace by stealing God's property calling it their own relative morality oh okay dad I think I'm done with this video and I hope it makes sense and watch this video that's coming up here in a little bit okay we'll go like that okay bye bye oh and stay tuned for the thing that's about ready to come up okay click on it